Isaiah 8, 20 mocks them. <laughs> Why do you turn to spirits that peep and mutter, these wizards? Perhaps the most famous is the 16th century astrologer, Nostradamus. And in modern times, the so-called Christian psychic, Edgar Cayce. The prophecies, so-called, of Nostradamus are not straightforward by any means. The Bible lays it out. It names names. <laughs> it names places. You've got to figure them out from Nostradamus. Uh, it's rather obscure and rather ambiguous. Nostradamus is often credited with having predicted the reign of Napoleon Bonaparte. The argument comes from this mysterious quatrain. In the third month, the sun rising, the boar and the leopard meet on the battlefield. The fatigued leopard looks up to heaven and sees an eagle playing with the sun. John Hogue, a best-selling author of Nostradamus prophecies, offers this interpretation. He writes, the third month, June 1815, the boar, this is Napoleon, and the leopard, what Napoleon called the heraldic lion symbolizing England. Normally, the third month would be March, but somehow Hogue has changed it to June to make it fit. He calls the boar Napoleon, though Napoleon's standard was that of an eagle, not a boar. Then without explanation, he makes the leopard into a lion so it can symbolize England. In another quatrain, Hogue rightly identifies the eagle with Napoleon. But the eagle has also been a symbol for other nations, including Poland, Saddam Hussein's Iraq, Hitler's Nazi Germany, and the United States of America. Why Napoleon should be singled out is not explained. Uh, different people come up with different ideas of what does this prophecy of Nostradamus mean or what does that one mean. And uh, very often they have come up with prophecies, I mean, they thought uh, that didn't turn out. Or then after the fact, they, they think they uh, have found something, you know. For years, people have insisted that Nostradamus predicted Adolf Hitler with his quatrain. Beasts, wild with hunger, will cross the rivers. The greater part of the battlefield will be against Hister. Did Nostradamus miss the name Hitler by one or two letters? as many suggest. Pro-Nostradamus author Erica Cheatham admits that commentators before 1930 understood the Hister to be the river Danube from its Latin name, Ister. As with Napoleon, Nostradamus adherents must alter what he actually wrote to make it fit. This same author goes on to say that, I can dismiss 95% of Nostradamus' predictions as historical coincidence. I wouldn't waste my time on the prophecies of Nostradamus for a number of reasons. Number one, he doesn't even know God. He's not a true prophet of God. Uh, God does not speak for him. In the Bible, this is the claim they make. More than 50 times, Ezekiel, for example, says, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying. They are laying it out. They're telling you very clearly that God is speaking through them. Nostradamus doesn't say that. In contrast to biblical prophets, Nostradamus used a form of divination known among witches as scrying. An encyclopedia on witchcraft today defines scrying as concentrating on an object until visions appear. It goes on to say that scrying has been practiced by magicians and witches through the ages. Among the purposes of scrying are predictions of the future. The object on which to concentrate is usually a shiny smooth surface, such as the crystal ball used by gypsy fortune tellers. Ink, blood, and other dark liquids were used by the Egyptians. Bowls of water were used by Nostradamus. In Deuteronomy, God says, there shall not be found among you anyone who uses divination or who practices witchcraft, or one who interprets omens, or a sorcerer, or one who casts a spell, or a medium, or a spiritist, or one who calls up the dead. For whoever does these things is detestable to the Lord.
Nostradamus, by his own admission, seemed to know that his practices were condemned. The Nostradamus Encyclopedia says, quote, he, Nostradamus, indicates how it is possible for the diviner to open the mind to divine inspiration. Almost in the same breath, however, he beseeches his infant son never to dabble in such practices, for, he says, they desecrate the body, disturb the mind, and send the soul to perdition. Welcome back to Truth Seekers. The bigger reason, of course, and if we get to the next section of film, Jay, Dave Hunt says that you know the main reason you know it's not true is because he's wrong so much, and you can't be wrong from a biblical standpoint. And that's the that's really the the, the key reason. Um, but, yeah, and it, and when you're weighing out again truth, Mike, I mean, why would you? want to look at someone who is even wrong once. It's, it's like the Bible. If it's wrong once, then why even have yeah. the Bible? It makes no sense. So let's look at that one that's never wrong. If there is such a thing, and we know there is because we haven't seen it debunked yet. If you can debunk prophecy in the Bible, over we'd really how like many to know. thousands of years? Man, they started, and you know, Moses was around 1400 BC, so, and, and the, New, the Old Testament. He started writing back then, and the last of it was a, about 400 B.C., so Malachi. So it was a thousand years of Old Testament prophecy, you know. Hmm. And then for a thousand years, under lots of different prophets, and they all have to be right if they were if from this Bible. And the reason the Jews picked them was they were never wrong in their lifetime. So the future prophecies should be right, too, if they're, if they're never wrong in their life. I mean, they wouldn't just accept anybody. You know, they accepted guys who made the most outlandish predictions constantly that no one could have known. You know, we've brought those things up before, like it's, it's going to start raining tomorrow. It's not going to stop for six months. And it'll stop six months from now on May 3rd at 4 p.m. in the air. Uh, something like that, really. You know, to the day of rain going for a long period of time, there was prophecy like that. Prophecies like that, and several of them, after those, people say, okay, you must be a prophet. <laughs> There's no way anybody could have known that. It's, in, it's incredible. You had 40 different authors over 1,500 years, over three continents, and they, they just interweave so precise. The evidence is so overwhelming, and the more you dig, the, the more woven of, of scripture you see, of, of, of prophecy and, and how true it really is. And, and when you're a, a seeker, there to me is no greater evidence than someone who can tell you exactly what's going to happen, where it's going to happen, and how it's going to happen. Well, that's what he says here, that this proves his existence. Um, you know, we were talking earlier about end time prophecy, Iran, Persia, allied against Israel, Saul Buthy in a minute you know, these end-time prophecies versus Nostradamus saying World War III is going to break out in 1999. After we finish talking to Saul, we will show, put up on the screen again some prophecies relating to Jesus that have already been fulfilled and to his first coming that, that were all written. They're in the Dead Sea Scrolls. They were all written, we know, way before he was born. He referred to them a lot. And we're going to talk about some of those and how unlikely they were, let alone the end time prophecies we're seeing today. So these things are all a pattern of fulfilled prophecy over time. But let's talk to Saul first. Saul, how are you doing tonight? I'm doing well. I was just, uh, I like to watch you guys show uh, from time to time. And I like to just, uh, just let people know that uh, 